Right. I want to start first with the volatility landscape, and then we'll uh, dig into the some of the hero flows we're seeing today. There's some very interesting flows taking place that I think uh, tr should signal some longer term trends that we see coming out of uh, FOMC. So let's just start with the volatility landscape after FOMC. This is actually from our volatility dashboard, which is at spotgamma.com. We just built and rolled out these tools. Uh, what you're seeing here is S&P term structure from Tuesday night in gray. Uh, and you'll note this shaded cone. The shaded cone shows the 10th, 90th percentile of term structure for the S&P over the last 60 days. So what you can see is from uh, Tuesday night, excuse me, to today, just it all got crushed, right? Uh, the term structure is now lower than it's been uh, at any point in the last 60 days. As you can see, we're below this cone. So whether this is a full risk on from the FOMC or not, ball got crushed as traders now see just much lower risk moving forward. And that's coming from a point of just very low risk in general. Here we look at skew. This is one month skew. What we get out of this is that we could see that uh, for the S&P again, slightly out of the money options, 10, 5% uh, roughly out of the money options have now uh, lower implied vols than they've had over the last, again, 60 days based on this range. So puts got sold after this event. And we see calls, the upside, holding on to a little bit of a bid. So if you can think about this conceptually, it looks something like a risk reversal where calls are being sold, excuse me, puts are being sold and calls are being bought. And that's generating some upside uh, positioning into the market as we rally out of FOMC. Now, what's interesting about this is that uh, here we're looking at one month volatility in the S&P, you can see that it's roughly around 11.5% right now. And if you look at the long-term average of where the VIX is priced relative to one month S&P volatility, there's generally a three to three and a half point premium there, which suggests that fair value for the VIX should be somewhere around 14. Now, as you know, if you looked at the VIX today, we're in the 12s. And so the issue with that here is that you can start to see that maybe the VIX is a little bit underpriced unless we really start to get a contraction in realized volatility. I think this dynamic is quite interesting as we've had such a strong stock up, vol up environment, and it appears that how maybe sort of feeding that as a right tail based on these skew metrics suggests that people are still looking to chase that upside, in which case volatility should really remain high in which case we shouldn't really see a whole lot more downside for the VIX. I think this particularly matters for those of you who are looking to hedge using uh, VIX call options. Uh, they may be a more effective hedge at this point than the S&P puts. Obviously, the S&P puts have that delta. If you buy a 5% on the money put and the market continues to rally, well, that puts losing value, obviously, as it gets farther away from where the S&P is trading. However, the VIX may hang in there pretty well in this kind of 13-ish area based on the fact that realized volatility is so active. We thought this trend channel was interesting here. We're not technical, technical analysts, but what struck us as so fascinating as the, the Powell pivot that came at the end of the year sparked a, excuse me, at the end of 2023, sparked a real rally in markets. Um, and the result of that has been this uptrend, which has been a clear channel. Why we're mentioning this in sort of our options folks presentation is that you can see all of the lows this year have been marked right into an options expiration. So you can see where we move up in this trend, we come back down, and that bottom of that trend tends to visit right around uh, the options expiration. And this has been something we saw a lot in 2021. We saw nine out of 12 uh, instances of, of the 12 expirations in 2021, we saw nine times that market was weak into that options expiration. This year looks so much like 2021 to us because of that aggressive call buying that we that we see, the buildup of call skews, just that general, again, trend. And so you can see that into OPEX, we get kind of weak, and then we tend to touch the bottom of this trend and then rally. The bottom of this trend also tends to line up with a major level of options positioning. So if you look at you know, 4,800, 4,900 strike, 5,000 strike, 5,100 into this options expiration. Uh, it was 5,100 was the big downside level. We've now broken up through 5,200 and that becomes a major support level as there's a bunch of positions building in there with 5,300, the upside target for us based on our models uh, into the end of the month. And so this pattern continues. We clear OPEX, we rip, and then we just sort of consolidate. 
And it's just been this stair step pattern that you can see very clearly. Now, the sector that gets the most attention certainly has been SM, uh, excuse me, the semis and the chip sector. Our call has been to look for skew to flatten and reverse uh, in the sector writ large, which, which would suggest a cooling in call demand. What was so interesting about NVIDIA is as the leader of the sector here is, we'll show the SKUs in a second. What you're looking at here is Hero Flow. What Hero does is it measures the hedging impact of all options trades in real time. So there's a myriad of different lines on here. But what I want you to see, the white is the stock price. What I want you to see in orange is longer dated calls. So that's all calls, any call that trades when you look at the hedging flow. And so what you can see is after the event on Monday night, which was Jetson uh, speaking in, a, in the NVIDIA keynote, you can see the stock open material weaker, and that was driven largely by longer dated calls. So it was a sell the news event. And what's so fascinating to us about this is that the stock did catch a little bit of a bid after that, but it was dominated by very short dated call buying flow. And it's been that short dated call buying flow that for the most part has been uh, the most pertinent or persistent flow in NVIDIA since that event. And I can see the short dated flow uh, in the green line, which measures only hedging impact from the next expiration options in NVIDIA. Further, you'll see on the put side here, all expiration puts are dark blue, zero DT or next expiration puts are light blue. Nobody's buying puts out of that NVIDIA event. What simply happened was people sold some longer dated calls. The zero DTE crowd is stepping in a little bit in the stock. It's up a little bit today, uh, but this was sort of the signal of things cooling off maybe a little bit. So what does that look like in the SKU landscape? Here in gray, you see SKU from one week ago. Uh, that's a 30 days to expiration option. You can see it was very elevated uh, towards the top of this trend. You could also see there was a call SKU, meaning out of the money calls, that's a uh, higher implied ball than at the money calls. And then the green line shows us what happened immediately after that event. So just like in earnings, indeed, those balls came down. Uh, we saw sector balls in that chip sector across the board come down as well which just tells us that, hey, the event, uh, you know, was priced in, even though it wasn't a negative event, it just wasn't enough to kind of re-spark the, the rage like we saw out of uh, their earnings report. Call schemes are still a little bit elevated. People still want that upside uh, relative to the at the money in terms of the implied walls. But you can see, again, we really came down uh, and deflated from a volatility perspective. Now, one of the things that we think this signals by and large is that what we've plotted here is the SMH versus the big mag, we call them the fives. So if you take NVIDIA and Tesla out of that mag seven group, uh, we think that this gap is set to close now uh, or these the, the gap will shrink. So while we're not necessarily thinking that there's going to be a giant consolidation in the SMH, our thinking is that based on these call skews flattening and volatility sort of coming out of that space a little bit, uh, that some of the bigger names may catch up. Uh, so just sort of a broadening of the market rally here. Now, this morning, obviously, uh, Micron had a very nice earnings report. They're up 17%. So that did put a little bit of a bid back into the space. But we do think that generally that call skew flattening and, and coming down in that se uh, semi-sector could be a signal that some of the other names will start to catch up a little bit now. So that's really what we're seeing out of the uh, FOMC, we have a couple of interesting things that we'll show you in Hero uh, at this moment. Um, we we did our last presentation on zero DTE flows, and uh, we can make that presentation available for if you're interested. Please uh, shoot us a note, uh, info at spotgam.com. We'll send you a link to that presentation. Um, on this past Tuesday, the day before the FOMC, we saw the highest ever SPX zero DTE options flow was 57% of total SPX volume was zero DTE. That's a record high. And this is what the hero flow looked like on that day. And again, the green line is zero DTE for SPX. The orange line is all expiration flow. And so you can see the fact that these two lines immediately overtrace each other or just don't separate throughout the day. Same thing with the put side, light blue being zero DTE puts, dark blue being all expiration puts. The fact that these lines are so overlaid tells us that the predominant flow on this day was purely zero DTE driven flow. We think that that is, we would put it in the speculative basket. And the reason that we do that is because oftentimes we'll see very heavy zero DTE flows and there's no sort of correlation to what the market may do the next day. So you may see a sharp rally driven by zero DTEs one day and then the next day there's no kind of autocorrelation to 
these flows the next day. They could very easily quick and uh, flip and reverse. And so we think it's very important to monitor zero DT flows as a signal of uh, how much brevity or how much lasting power a move may have. Uh, we wanted to flip now to the actual HERO application and show you a couple of very interesting things that we're seeing uh, in the application itself because it is highlighting big flows out of the uh, FOMC event today. So this is our HERO application. And what I want to highlight here, obviously in white, is the stock price for starting with the S&P 500. You see zero DT flow is a little bit light today, uh, meaning that that T line is pretty flat versus there was a big... Uh, selling into the new market high this morning. You can actually see if we break that out a little bit, you can see that it was indeed uh, a, a fairly nice combination of uh, call selling and put buying when we break this open. So if we zoom in a little bit, uh, pardon me, I said call selling before. This is called buying and it's longer dated call buying in orange. You can see it's about $2 billion notional more than zero DTE. Uh, the put buying was in blue. Uh, that is all expiration put buying. So that appears to be either the rolling up of hedges, uh, some type of covering of generally in the money puts is what we would see or expect to see there. So, you know, there was kind of this negative delta response, we would say very early in that in that opening market high, but that flow has shut off. And I say it's shut off because this blue line is just flat throughout the day, right? Whereas this orange call line is persistently tracking higher. It's telling us that longer dated calls are being bought across the S&P 500. This, this signal in particular measures SPX, SPY, and ES futures options flow. Now, the interesting underlying signal that uh, I think is really helpful for those of you looking for idea generation, if you sort the hero signal, uh, what you can see here is that the width of this gauge is the high and low of our hero signal over the last 30 days. So if you're down negative like we are in silver, for example, um, which is interesting to us because silver, obviously, one of the assets that caught a bid, uh, gold, Bitcoin kind of catching a bid. Um, but the fact that the hero signal is down telling us that traders is sell are selling calls or buying puts, and that's the heaviest flow that we've seen in the last 30 days in this ETF, and the ETF is down 3%. So what does that look like for actually SLV? Believe, when we bring this up, we will see some pretty healthy put buying. And you can see here in blue that there was indeed some very chunky put buying. And I say it's chunky because you'll know how vertical this blue line is, right? That tells us that there were some big, very aggressive sweepers coming in. You can see that delta notional volume spiking up here in these little gray bars. Call activity fairly flat through the day, a little bit of call selling, but the big flow is some very, very big, about $60 million worth, uh, very chunky put buyers that came out uh, in uh, SLV. And again, once that flow stopped, it does seem like, by and large, uh, SLV is flattened out a little bit. So we think that's a, extremely interesting. But the thing that really caught us, caught our eyes on the financials, if I scroll uh, down, I've sorted this hero signal uh, by the uh, strongest to weakest names. And you'll see that there are a lot of financial names that are really catching a very strong bid today. Uh, you can see in this case, this is Goldman. Goldman saying put selling. Uh, a lot of call buying here, which is adding to the strength. If we scroll up a little bit, we see BlackRock as well. Uh, very bullish flows there. We can also see um, some of the, the XLF just broadly as the sector. Uh, again, same story. You're seeing um, aggressive call buying across that sector as well as some of the other uh, more regional kind of base banks. So, you know, that sector is catching longer dated call flows. And those longer dated call flows are important because those are people who are buying calls with a view that is past this week, right? Oftentimes we'll see zero DTE calls, for example, which is in green. Uh, that will be the dominant flow, like I showed that hero example of the S&P where, where it was all zero DTE flow. So this is this is people positioning for something longer than this week. It's less speculative order flow. Um, and so we think that that is a, a very healthy sign for that sector. And that makes some intuitive sense given some of the adjustments that uh, the Fed made. Um, we mentioned Micron before it was up uh, quite a bit after earnings. Looks like that's faded a little bit here. And what we see there writ large is a little bit of call buying, longer dated call buying earlier in the day. Uh, but if you look at the spread between zero DT and green and longer dated and orange, that, that stayed fairly stable. So what we could take away from that is in this early pocket where we see our hero flow alert, uh, there was some longer dated call positioning, but 
by and large here, it's mostly zero DTE kind of drifting things around uh, after those opening highs. Very little taking place on the put uh, put side of things. Looks like some initial put selling, but pretty quiet, honestly, after, after that. Uh, I want to touch on the Hero Flow Alert quickly. Hero Flow Alert tells you when the options deltas that are being traded, so the Hero signal itself, it tells you when the amount of options flow should be significant to the underlying name. We use something called a transaction uh, cost model based uh, on that. One of my previous uh, jobs back in the day was working for the Credit Suisse Algo Desk. And so obviously understanding transaction costs, uh, when you're VWAPing orders, the like, um, it's all you know key driver of trading a lot of stock volume. So I use some of that logic here when looking at uh, building out these flow alerts. The flow alerts, we show that 70% of the time after a flow alert goes off, a stock tends to be in revert. Uh, so you can see, you know, very quick action here. You got an early flow alert with the stock rallying, that flow alert goes off and then the stock fades. The idea being that a bunch of call buying, that call buying shuts off and the call uh, and the stock fades. So you can see a list of those flow alerts here in the alert tab. You can also link Hero to any of your worksheets in Bloomberg, which is a nice feature uh, so that if names that you care about, you'll get a ding or a ringing. Uh, when the stock goes off, uh, when the alert goes off, excuse me. Um, and, and another side note, you can do a couple of other interesting things here. You can look back in time if you'd like. So if you'd like to look five days back and say, oh, what was the flow yesterday in NVIDIA or something else, you can do that. Um, as well as a, a couple of other settings that I will dig into uh, now for, uh, for for keeping things nice and, uh, nice and short. Um, so at any rate, that kind of rounds out the presentation. Uh, the, the takeaway here is that ball really got crushed. We're seeing longer dated call buying come in. There's very little signs of, of people looking to hedge out or monetize uh, some of those gains. There was, you know, there was early marks of that, but that mark, those marks really seem to have faded. Our spot gamble models, which is part of our spot gamble, uh, dot com membership show 40, excuse me, 5,300 as that major upside target, 450 in the queues. Um, and so we're just really looking for uh, the strength to continue. And we are seeing this longer dated call buying come into the market as a dominant flow. That's $3.2 billion uh, worth of call buying. That's pretty significant across the S&P. Uh, it's hard to, to fight that bullish flow. 